Shalom WJC family. It's time for our weekly Torah talk. This week in synagogue, we are taking a little diversion from the regularly scheduled weekly Torah portion as we will celebrate the holiday of Shavuot, the anniversary of receiving the Torah from Sinai, at Sinai, from God, 50 days after leaving Egypt. You know, Torah is a, has become a funny word. Um, it has so many different meanings. If I say the word Torah to you, um, you might think of the scrolls that sit in the ark, in the sanctuary of a synagogue. That is a Sefer Torah, a book of Torah. But you also might think of the Talmud, the rabbinic uh, teachings, a long um, and complicated set of works based on the Mishnah and a commentary on the Mishnah. The Mishnah published around 200 of the common era, the Babylonian Talmud, somewhere between 550 and 650. Of course, the Torah, as we talk about it on Sinai, goes back 3,000, 300, 400 years, something like this. So much, much later um, development, but Talmud Torah, Talmud is short for Talmud Torah, the learning of Torah. And of course, the whole process of Torah's evolution, continuing revelation, and the continued conversation about what exactly it is that is Torah, or what exactly the Torah is telling us to do, is also a definition of Torah. Torah is used to refer to a collection of specific mitzvot, of things that we are supposed to do as Jewish people or opportunities for us to do these things. And Torah refers to Jewish values, uh, sort of this corpus of ethical behavior that we think of as Torah, as living a life of Torah. Torah is so broad, but one thing Torah always is, is good, important, central to Jewish living. Now, that might mean something different for me than it means for, me, for you, right? One person, it might mean a very close connection to Jewish practice in a traditional sense, observing every um, mitzvah, checking every box of the way the rabbis have interpreted Torah practice. And it may be doing very little of that, but living values and trying to capture the ethics of of the Torah and making those part of your life and everything in between and probably many other definitions. So when we come on Shavuot to celebrate Torah, part of the, the question is what exactly are we celebrating? And I want to highlight an important pasuk, uh, uh, two important verses from the book of Deuteronomy. Here Moses is, you know, after 40 years wandering in the desert, preparing the people to go into the promised land. And he tells them, make sure you do Torah. Right? He says, Ushmartem vasitem ki hi chokhmatchem uvinatchem le'enei ha'amim. He says, observe them fully. He's talking about the mitzvot. Observe them faithfully, for that will be proof of your wisdom and discernment to other peoples. I share Yishma'un. They'll hear about all of these statutes. And they'll say, surely that great nation is wise and discerning people. So it seems like if we take this verse alone, that somehow um, our system of <clears throat> practice will communicate values to the rest of the world and, and ultimately, hopefully, elevate ethical behavior for everyone. And I think you can make an argument that that has, in fact, happened over the last thousands of years as um, biblical uh, ethics has become a central part of Western ethics, at least. But listen to the next verse. That, that was Deuteronomy 4.6. Listen to verse 7. Ki mi asher lo Elohim krovim elav. For what great nation is there that has God so close at hand? As is our God, Adonai, whenever we call. So what is it exactly that the nations are going to see as we do Jewish practice? What is it that we are going to experience? We are going to experience a sense 
of God feeling close. And ultimately, that is the idea of Torah. And I know it's easy to get so caught up in each and every statute and che checking every box that we miss the whole point, which is this sense of the divine in our life, of divine guidance, of divine closeness. And when the rabbis talk about this, they, they talk about this idea of God sort of like a parent giving guidance to the Jewish people. And when the Jewish people follow the advice, God feels close. God is proud. God is quelling, you might say, as we do for our children when they follow our advice and hopefully succeed because of it. Rabbi Nachman of Bratzlov talks about this specific verse, and he says God takes pride in the Jewish people when we follow God's instructions. As a matter of fact, in the Talmud, it says that God wears tefillin. Now, you don't have to believe this literally, or you can if you want, but it says God wears tefillin just like we do. It says it in Brachot. And what does it say on the tefillin? It says, who is like my people, the Jews, for which nation is so great? that God is close with them. That in other words, we put on tefillin that has God's name on it to, to symbolize our being bound to God. We put tefillin, these leather boxes with straps on our, on our arms and on our heads to symbolize our closeness to God. Rabbi Nachman is interpreting this Talmud to be saying that God puts on tefillin to show that he is bound, that God is bound to us. That God is quelling for us. That when we follow God's advice, we can sense God's closeness. It's a beautiful idea. Rabbi Nachman, being Rabbi Nachman, he goes on to talk about what is this closeness. This closeness is, is for, for Rabbi Nachman, it's prayer. When we pray, knowing that God will answer us. Rabbi Nachman's whole philosophy is built about the primacy of prayer. And maybe that works for you. And maybe it's not the prayers in the Siduri. Maybe it's a personal prayer from the heart. Rabbi Nachman definitely believed in this, going someplace private and calling out to God in, in English or whatever is your first language, that God will hear and God will be close. But it also can be in Jewish practice, in however we interpret Torah. That can be calling out to God. That can be doing the mitzvot. It can be following the values or what we interpret as the values of the Torah. It could be linking ourselves to the Jewish people in various ways through the land of Israel, through a synagogue community, through Torah study, through Talmud Torah, learning Torah uh, at the shul or at one of the great Torah teaching organizations we have around like Hadar or Hartman or so many others. As we approach Shavuot, as we come together this Thursday night at our Tikkun Lel Shavuot to learn Torah, as we come to shul on Friday and Saturday come to shul to say Yizker and say the prayers, as we celebrate Matan Torah, the gift of Torah, it is a challenge for us to reflect again on what exactly this central uh, symbol of Judaism means in our lives. What does Torah mean to me and how will I incorporate it even more greatly, hopefully, in order to feel God's closeness, whether that's to do another one of these Jewish practices, to do another mitzvah, whether it's to express my Jewish values that are Torah in some other way, whether it's to link myself more closely to Jewish community or to God, all of it counts. Torah is broad. What is it going to be for you, this, this celebration, this cycle around of receiving Torah? Whatever it is, I hope it's meaningful, and I hope if you need support, to get there, that you'll come to us to find it. Wish you a Chag Sameach, a very happy Shavuot, and we'll see you in Shul.